Hey guys, can y'all hear me? <sighs> hey guys, how's it going? Hey, Chrissy Z, thanks for joining the club. Hey, Dawn, hey, go kart. Good to see you guys. Hey, Mogan. Hey, Deep, how's it going? Hey Deep, good to see you. Hey Dawn, go kart. Eva, good to see you. Hey Nicole, hey Patrice, hey Jennifer, good to see you. Hey Nikki. <laughs> he had a nosebleed earlier this today and it lasted like 45 minutes long. It finally stopped. Now he's got another one. So I just handed him the box of tampons and an ice pack and said, deal with it. I've got to go teach a class. <laughs> you can tell that your mom's a nurse when she just hands you a, a box of tampons. Hey, Vanessa, can you give two examples of using 52 modifier and 53? You take your exam tomorrow. I do have some cool one coming up that I wrote myself today, and you know it's going to be tricky, Vanessa. Um, let me make sure y'all can hear me. Um, and you know, mine that are, that I write myself are super hard. So, um, I wrote one for t 52 and 26 today or something. Um, but I don't think I did one for 20 for 53. So remind me when we get down there to those, ah, oh. he had a little bit of a runny nose, three days ago it's starting to dry up now so when the mucous membranes in his nose gets um drier then it has been really moist you know for a while um and it's getting hotter you know up to 100 and what's the temperature right now 102 degrees outside so it's to be expected with him um but it's been a while he hasn't had a nosebleed all winter long so this is his first one of the season <laughs> I know, tampons are the best. He's um, had these before. Um, most of his pre-teen life, starting probably around nine years old, um, when his nose started to grow a little bit bigger than baby size, you know. So from 9 to 14 he's had them pretty consistently every summer um i just haven't started back on the steroid um nasal spray um this summer so we haven't needed it so this is his first one so we'll have to get back on that i just hate giving him meds if i don't have to yes 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 great great they are Cracking down on modifier 59 and 25 and asking for more documentation. Um, they got a lot of feet, uh, a lot of um, pushback from the medical community and have pushed that off um, for another year. But yeah, they can ask for that. They want to make sure that the doctors are really documenting the history and exam 
for another ENM visit to be coded with another ENM visit. So that 25 modifier, you're going to really want to make sure that there was really two office visits done. If they're doing two office visits in 15 minutes, if it says that the patient was checked in at 10 a.m. and they were already out the door and rescheduled for their next appointment within 15 minutes and we're billing for two office visits for a well child check and another visit for their upset stomach, you know, the insurance companies are going to push back. The EHRs collect so much information now. They know what time the patients check in, what time they're leaving, what time they made a new appointment. It's it's just all there. So, you know, they they have access to more data than people think about. So you want to make sure that there's a good amount of time before the patient checks out and they reschedule for their next appointment or whatever. Um, people don't, office managers and doctors don't think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, it is too long. Um, it's just that, um, and we went all the way to our local emergency room today. We we drove all the way there. It's just around the corner. I know them, and I was going to get it cauterized. We've never had to get it cauterized, but 45 minutes was too long. We got to the parking lot, and, of course, it stopped. So we went to the grocery store. I found a great deal if you are at uh, Kroger today. There's some honey um, that is in the deli department up on top of the cheese cart thing that's got all that fancy cheese that's too expensive to buy well there's a little tiny jar of this a something honey and um it's one of those fancy nine dollar five ounce bottles of honey it's 8.99 but i scanned it, it ended up being 99 cents so anyway i went back and got some more jars uh, but, um, we did, we, we, we almost, we, we made it to the parking lot and checked in and I was going to get him carterized, but by the time we got checked in, it stopped. So anyway, he's got another one back again, but he started playing outside, um, because I was distracted making questions and helping twinkle with a coupon code that's still not working on my website so I got distracted and he went outside to play um, gorilla tag and of course it got overheated again and there goes that nosebleed again so he'll be fine uh, I'm not traveling till next week so I'll be leaving out on the 8th so next Friday, no live, unless I show you some of Texas. If there is any of you guys near Fairview, Texas or Dallas area, I'll be there for five days. If anybody wants to grab some tea and pick my brain somewhere, I'll go have boba or something with you and meet you somewhere. And we can spend, you know, a few you know, nap time when, when my mom is napping or whatever, we can um, hang out for a few minutes and you can pick my brain. If happens to be anybody around that area. <sighs> a week off. Well, it's not, you know, it's, it's like I got to take care of my mom. She's 70. Get her to the airport without falling. <laughs> get her off the airplane. Get her to her brother's house. Get her back. My brother, my mother's brother is already sent us an invitation saying he wakes up at 5 a.m. We can have bagels at his house for that time. You know how much stress that is to get up, get dressed and get to somebody's house by 5 a.m. for bagels. You know, <laughs> he's ex military government worker. He did cybersecurity uh, for many, many years for the government. And uh, yeah, he's on military time. So. Oh, good God, it's not going to be a vacation, but it's going to be fun to see family and hang out, of course. Ah, oh, you're in Austin. When is the next workshop? I have it scheduled for, let me check. It's just my website was like freaking out and sending everybody an e message about the workshop, like nonstop one day. <laughs> 
and I couldn't get it to stop, so I took the notification down. But as soon as I get back from my vacation, I'll put it back up so you guys can register for that. But let's see. I have it scheduled for... I'm a-looking. June 18th. Nervous Urinary System and E&M. June 18th. I just was just being ridiculous sending y'all so many emails. I was trying to stop it from auto sending y'all emails. I don't know. Every time they update the website and all of its options, it goes a little funky on me. So sometimes things happen. So that'll be the next workshop. What did I do with chat? There we go. Yes, safe travels. Safe travels. You're in Dallas, Patrice. That's awesome. So we're staying in McKinney. I think that's the name of the town. In an Airbnb. But I'll be in Dallas on, of course, the 8th. We fly in about 3 to 4 o'clock. And then... Um, we leave out on the 13th around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but I'll be in the area. We only have plans with Uncle David for dinner on, uh, I think, the 8th and the 10th, but I have the 9th, the 11th, and the 12th free if anybody wants to go have boba or something, tea wants to bring their books, and I can give them some advice. If we can make plans. I also have the Airbnb with a swimming pool, a hot tub. If you got kids, come bring them swimming. <laughs> we can talk shop out on the back patio. It's got a covered patio with some sort of um, seating out back there and some ceiling fans. I don't know how hot or humid Texas will be, but... I don't know. My kids will be out there. Having a blast. Who knows what that chlorine water will do to Travis's nose. We'll see. Second live. Yay. Great, Jane. I'm glad you're here. We'll be east of Dallas for a weekend. Not while you're in town. Oh, sorry, Vanessa. Hey, Twinkle. Aw, he's still not feeling good. No worries. No worries. Don't stress about us. We're okay. We're uh, talking about the darn website and coupons not working and Travis's nosebleed. <laughs> Aaron says she completely understands. Doesn't seem good to have kiddos or elderly fry by themselves anymore. No, it's crazy. You're in Dallas, Rosh. Well, great. Could have you and Patrice. We could have a cool little tea date. Talk over coding. Could help y'all out in some capacity, maybe, I hope. I try not to stay on the go, but... My oldest son wanted to take a couple of trips, so I went with him somewhere, and then now my mom wants to go see her brother. They're all in their 70s now, and Debbie's going to be there, too. She's the oldest sibling, and I think she's 72 or 73. My mom's 71, and then Uncle David is turning 70 on the 10th, so it'll be fun. Yes, yes, yes. 
any other questions before I get started on any codes or anything besides the 52 and 53? I'm just making a note down on that. I didn't even realize I haven't even turned in my digestives or no, yeah, my respiratory section of notes yet. What happened to that, Jennifer? I need somebody to keep me straight. I thought I had already done respiratory for 2023 and I guess I haven't turned that in yet. The anatomy, oh my God, I did so much on the anatomy on the first two pages. It's really overwhelming. Holy crow. Um, but it looks like I still need to finish page 209 through 219. And then I finished the rest of the chapter with the last three pages are done, but I forgot four pages or something in the middle here, five pages <laughs> that I just didn't finish and I gotta go back. That's easy, if I had just finished those five pages, I could post that section up too. I guess I got ADHD brain and forgot that I was in the middle of doing this section and started another section. So, man, I gotta finish that. <sighs> no worries. You're terrified of the books? You are not new here, Deep. <laughs> Would love to meet. That's awesome. That's great. Rosh and Patrice, if y'all will either message me at um, medical coding by Jen at Gmail, put Dallas in the header, or if you're on Discord, message me there, remind me, and I'll send you my cell phone number so that you can get a hold of me while we're there. Oh, you enjoy reading the blogs? I don't think, I think they're probably way too wordy. So I worry about the blogs. I did like five of them this month trying to, and people seem to have more questions about them than they do. Like, I don't know, like the neuro stimulator one, somebody said they were disappointed in it because it, it didn't have the right neuro codes in it. They thought it would based off the header in the email or something. I don't know what I did wrong there. Um, and then the the 30 day calendar one confused everybody. Everybody was trying to sign up for something. But I thought this last one I just did on enhancing your CPT book was more clear because I put more pictures in it like okay step one do this and here's you a picture of what that looks like here's step two here's what it looks like and step three here's what it looks like you know that kind of thing everything is labeled number one number one number one I don't know what happened to the blog when it changed because it did have four steps in it but then when I put the pictures in it it redid the numbers again so everything is step one but it's silly anyway I guess hopefully that last one is more clear I guess I hope I don't know oh I got a comment on it I didn't even notice I had a comment but I'm trying to look at it now oh there it is where's the comment whoops
do you use Sharpie fine point or specific pens for writing? Yep, I use, I use L-E-P-E-N's and what's those other ones called? They are called Big Intensity, Big Intensity, only bold colors and only 0 0.4 point. Here we go. Answer that. All right. No other questions. We'll move over to the Word document. Okay, you have a question. Yes, I will be loading notes for the ICD-10 book. Absolutely. No worries, Gupta. I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> this is a funny coincidence. Jen, she is a different person and similar name. No way. No way. I've got two deeps. You're kidding. <laughs> I'm like deep. You are not new. <laughs> I've been talking to you for months. No way. Okay, your question is about 62360, what's the difference in the second zone? I may have these codes in our questions for today. Let me see. Did I already pick these codes? Uh, control F, what codes did I pick for today? 62, what did I do? 62360. No, no matches. Okay. I got close. I've got some codes coming up in that area today. But let's go look. So let me come back over here and turn on this thing. We are at six, two, three. Six two three sixty. Yep, six two three sixty. Sixty five. Sixty five. What is the difference? And then second, okay. Well, this is easy. Our sixty is an implantation, where sixty five is a removal. So. Just the very first words. This is a removal. This is a implantation. This one does replace, and this one says it's removing a reservoir pump previously implanted, but we're not putting another one in where this one would be putting one in. So this is just simply a removal. All it is. This one is actually implanting or taking one out to put another one in. They're both intra. They're both epi. They're both reservoir. But one is implanting or replacing. The other one is strictly removing. They also call this one, AKA a Blake drain, which is kind of handy tandy too. All right, what is the other one? And then 62350K and 55. 
55. Same thing. Implantation, revision, or repositioning. This one is a removal. So this one's going to be implanting, revising, repositioning. But this one, 55, is just going to take it out. No putting it back in. Put deep number two, <laughs> thing one and thing two. <laughs> I'm like, no way you're not new. I know Aaron. It's very unobtuse of me to think that nobody else would have the same name. I should probably... No, no, no. Don't change your name. Your name is great. Hey, Jamie Little John. No problem, Rosh. Story of my life. I get this everywhere. I'm used to this. That's funny. There, in the 80s, every girl was named Jennifer. There was always three or four of us in the class, so it's really hard to make yourself uh, stick out. But Jennifer was a very popular name. It's a derivative of, like, Guinevere from the Knights of the Round Table. So parents just loved that for a long while. Not very many people name their kids Jennifer anymore, so it's finally fallen out of favor. But there for a while, there was a bunch of us, so I've been there too. First one of the night. A patient is suspected of a lesion on the vocal cords. A physician would most likely perform a laryngoscope or a bronchoscope for further diagnosis and treatment. Which one would be the answer? Thank you, Twinkle. Erin, you just won a free membership to the um, YouTube subscription, which is going to help you because you're going to get access to tons of exclusive videos, all the book prep videos. I just posted four hours of the digestive system book prep videos up in the last couple of days. So that's cool. And access to any workshops that are older than 90 days and access to any duck classes that had the advanced questions in them that are older than 30 days old. So that's going to help out a whole bunch. Y'all, I can't fool you on this one. Good job. Good job on that question. Perfect. What about this one? A patient is experiencing sinus blockage in the area between the eye sockets. These sinuses are called frontal or ethmoid. Which one? Fifteen days till your exam, Eva? Oh, my. I think there is a lot of people going to take their exam in June. Which is great. Especially if you have two attempts, I think, taking it in June. And then if by chance you don't pass, you can take it again October. That way you're not struggling at the end of the year to pass and find an exam date because everybody pushes this off to the last minute and then it's really hard to find an exam date around November or December plus the weather starts getting bad 
Y'all remember poor MK was having to drive so much in the snow to get so far into big cities to try to get this test taken again. And uh, the weather was just awful. I felt so bad for her. I know, I do. I start y'all out really easy just to make y'all feel. <laughs> yep, yep, the pounce will be here soon. I wrote some questions today, so you're taking yours on the 24th. I think the other deep last name is spelt a little bit differently. There's something else going on with that last name. Yes, this one is not frontal, it's ethmoid. You can find pictures of those sinus cavities in the ICD-10 book. It's really helpful in that section right before you start coding those sinus infections and stuff. They got a really nice anatomy pictures there. A patient has pleural fluid that must be removed. The physician would most likely perform what to remove the fluid? Are we going to use a pneumocentesis or a pneumoectomy? We're removing. Yeah, the nerves finally hit. Yeah, you'll be nervous. It's normal to be nervous. Just know that you've got a little bird on your shoulder. Take me with you. Remember that you don't read the questions. Go straight to the answers. Look at the differences between those answers. And... Make sure that you Yeah, make sure that you only look through the question for what the code differences is looking for. That's all you gotta do. Pneumocentesis. All right, we're going to match up. We've got fistula, graft, stenosis, thrombosis, and ligation. Which one is a fistula? A is surgically closed off vessel. B is a blood clot. C is surgically made passage. D is a piece of tissue that is transplanted. And E is narrowing passage. What do you guys think is the first one? What is a fistula? I kind of disagree with the definition because fistulas can come up and they're not surgically made, but. They happen. Some people have a chronic illness that just creates them out of nowhere. There's a poor girl here on TikTok that is just suffering with them so badly. Like her spine leaks, her pelvic area leaks, just stomach, it's just everywhere. And no amount of cutting them out stops them from leaking because they just grow back. So... She just has inside fluids just flowing out of her body all the time. So you can imagine what her clothes look like at the end of the day and then trying to keep some protective material over it, but then your skin not get irritated because of the glue and stuff and Band-Aids or whatever. Bless her heart. I, w I wish there was... I'm glad she's on TikTok because somebody can figure out something. There's got to be... Well, they can't get rid of them. So then somebody's got to come up with some new material that she could wear that could keep her skin dry, but still collect that fluid and get it away from her body. 
and put it somewhere so that it could stay so that it doesn't leak into our clothes. Got to be something. Got to be somebody out there to be able to make something, some sort of spongy material of some sort. I don't know. Put great minds together. Somebody's going to come up with something. So I've been following her journey, trying to see if she gets better. What about graft? Definitely not a blood clot. Surgical piece of tissue transplanted, easy peasy. Yep, that's a graft. Stenosis. Narrowing passage. Yep. Thrombosis and ligation. We have blood clot left over and surgically closed off a vessel. Which one's four? Thrombosis. Good job, Nikki. Hey, Bonkers, good to see you. Hi, Tin. Hey, Jenny. Good to see you guys. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, Tammy. Which one is thrombosis? Are we blood clot or surgically closed off vessel? So I'm just catching up with chat. Chat's going crazy. Yep, this one's B. And then ligation is to tie off. Good job. Oh, Lord. All right, y'all ready? Get your thinking caps on. What's a six-letter word that means portacath? Portacath is a blank access device. We're looking for a six letter word that would fit. Six letter word. I think this one might be the one of the most difficult ones. I don't know. I could be wrong. Chat quieted down. Hey, Andrea. You didn't miss much. We were just playing around. Not central. Good try, go kart. Good try. Very good try. But you're on the right path. <laughs> Very cool, Ashley. How are you doing today? Good to see you. Ashley thinks it's N's and S, so let's put that in there. Does that help? There you go, guys. Good job, Eva. Venus. That makes your brain hurt right there. <laughs> what about a six letter word that is the final section of the large intestines? What do you think about that one?
Yeah, if allergies didn't exist. That's so true. Our household runs on the dissolvable Claritin. They're called red tabs and they, you put them underneath your tongue and they dissolve instantly into your bloodstream so they don't have to get digested and go through the digestive tract before it hits your bloodstream. Those are expensive, but they're the best things that we, we use here in the desert. Oh, good job, good job. Bookers, good job. Eight letter word for the first part of the small intestines. Can we buy a vowel? <laughs> you got a consonant on the one before. Rectum is your tail end. For allergies. Oh, <laughs> it's called, uh, hold on, I'll go get the box. So you can look at it. I'm describing what the rectum is while y'all are asking about what red tabs are. <laughs> I'm so blonde some days. Here we go. It's these, the dissolvable ones. They're the red tabs. You can get $8 off coupons out of um, Grandma Made Biscuits. I grabbed a biscuit while I was in the kitchen. <laughs> Sorry. Um... You can get an $8 off coupon out of any magazine or newspaper article, or they're just everywhere all the time. Those little um, magazines, they put your news in your mailbox that are local advertisements. They usually have a coupon for these too. Any doctor's offices will have a, a coupon for these, but it's gotta say the red tabs, they dissolve. Put it on your tongue. You can put it on the roof of your mouth or under your tongue, whichever one, it goes straight into your bloodstream really works fast on your allergies but it's expensive they want to charge you know like 18 bucks or something for a box of 30 almost a dollar a pill it's ridiculous all right yes first part of the small intestines Duodenum, very good. Last one. Navel, nine letters. That's all you're getting. What do you think? Claritin D is big dog. That's like for if you have really congested because it's got that extra medicine in it, not just an antihistamine where you're having a reaction to um, the plants around you or allergies. The D one is you're already having 
um, mucus that is thickening and making you sick, sick, and um, you need to get it coughed up and out of you. So that's that's heavy duty stuff too. Ten. Ten got it almost. I was looking for umbilical. Close enough for government work. <laughs> So this question I wrote, and it's in two parts, so I apologize now, but let me, I don't think I put in my things that cover up the questions. I ran out of time. So let's go to our answers first. Let's go look at our seven sevens. What is this? I was working in this digestive system last night, and I figured this out, and I thought, oh, that's cool. I bet I should teach that. So if we go to our 77053 and 054, just look up your differences between these two. I went to the wrong numbers, and I wrote the question. Oh, my Lord. All right. There we go. Now I'm there. So if you've got what your difference is between the codes in your head, now check out your question and see what you think the answer is. Yes, this is for um, Geor Georgina. Yeah, for any medical coding certification exam, this is just all exercises to help you pass. If I make a question or bring it up, it's because it's important, and I've heard from somebody somewhere or seen it somewhere posted recently on social media that someone said this term or analogy was on their exam. I try to keep current on that daily. I have Google alerts for any time anybody says anything about what's on any one of those exams, whether it's CPC or AHIMA, CCS, any NHA. I do my best to teach as many across the genres as I can. So we have these codes. The 53 is for single. 54 is for multi. We have several being done, so we know we can get rid of 53. The difference between this one and that one is a provider doing the interpretation. If we look at our code descriptors for our fifty three and fifty four, and this goes along with a lot of this section. A lot of this section has supervision and an interpretation included in a lot of the codes here. There's a ton where the supervision and interpretation is included. And you don't have to put any um, 
modifier at the end when a, when the test is done and it is supervised and interpreted by the physician when they're present and stuff. So that's cool. It just it happens throughout all the codes, a lot of these throughout this whole section. So you'll see that repeated in many, many codes throughout this section as you go through it. So that's helpful. So what does it mean when the question says the MD was performing just an interpretation? It doesn't say that the doctor supervised. It just says that the doctor did the interpretation. So in that particular instance, if the doctor didn't do the entirety of what's in the descriptor, which is the supervising of the procedure also, then we would add a modifier to change that CPT code descriptor. And this particular CPT code modifier would change the descriptor to be only performing the interpretation. That's why we would add it. So with any of these codes throughout this digestive system, when we have supervision and interpretation already included in the code, if the question alludes to the provider only doing the interpretation, you would add the 26 modifier to it to show that they did not do the supervision of the test. They only did the interpretation of the films once the films were done by a radiologist or another MD somewhere else. Does that make sense? Okay, so this one is definitely going to be D because it doesn't say that the doctor supervised the galactograms at all. Now, since the MD did not supervise the galactograms or whatever and is only doing the interpretation, the modifier 26 is appropriate. Now, if we were billing for just the test to have been done without the supervision, then what would be the answer? I don't have an A, B, or C, or D for this, so y'all can just... I'm hoping it's not flying over your head. If we're doing this test at our facility, but the MD is not present, only our radiologist is doing the supervision, how would we bill this? Are we just going to bill the 5-4 and leave it at that? Y'all are close, but not TC would be used if the machine, the galactogram, was done not at a hospital, but at another location. Um, what I'm asking here is not 
a machine is at a different location. The machine is still at the hospital. I'm just saying that the hospital is going to bill for this procedure without the physician supervising the test. Only the radiologist is here. There's no special technical component because this machine isn't at a facility that it shouldn't be at, if that makes sense. So it's not TC. <laughs> TC would be just because they own the equipment and they're it's a specialty equipment that that facility has. Like if the doctor bought that equipment and put it in his primary care physician's office or something. But this is not the scenario. There you go, Aaron. 52 modifier, reduce services because we're not billing for a supervising physician to interpret it. Yep. Reduce services. Yep. That is correct. So what I have in my notes for tips on this is some codes above can use modifier 52 if another provider interprets. Um, which also means if provider only interprets use modifier 26. And also if done outside of a regular hospital may use whoops use TC so this pretty much goes anywhere in digestion other sections may have different rules but this seems to be what I keep saying seeing an encoder for all these codes that have the supervision and interpretation. Wrong one. This one. All these that have the supervision and interpretation mixed in. Every time I look at the encoder, it gives me those same guidelines for those three modifiers right there. That if another doctor interprets, we're going to go to 26 or 52, sorry, and then when that doctor bills for his services or her services for interpreting, that's when they're going to use the 26 modifier. And then if the machine is somewhere other than a place of service at the hospital, then they can use the TC. But it's for all these with the supervision interpretation. Now, if we were going to use the 53 modifier that somebody asked me about today, if this patient had multiple, right here, MD noticed after the first, ah, uh, Image was done. The session was terminated due to due to patient tolerance. Um, 
that is where you would get. She was scheduled for several, so you wouldn't change your 54 just because they may have only done one of the um, lacmoral glands, the mamma mammillary glands. Because she was scheduled for a multi, we're still going to build the 54, right? But we're going to add that 53 modifier on it because we terminated and stopped the procedure due to the patient's tolerance level. So that's where your 53 would come in. We would not reduce it down and we would not build the 53 because that's not what she was scheduled for. If she was scheduled for one and we got one done, then great. But if she was scheduled for multi and we only got one done, then we have to put the 53 modifier on it. So whoever asked me about the 53, and I hope that helps answer your question on that one. Oh, I had all that typed already. I didn't realize. Remember that I had typed it already. Uh -huh. Any questions? Well, y'all had a lot of, a lot of messages here. I'm just reading them. I hope it's not flying over your heads. Maybe write in your book. Yep. That's what I did. I wrote this paragraph, these three little paragraphs in my notes. Every few pages, wrote it down at the bottom, keep myself straight. The more times you write it, better off you'll be, the more you'll remember it. Category code 111. <laughs> TC is means if it's done outside of a regular hospital. If we are in... Hulk Hogan's medical practice down on Boulevard Street, and he has one of these machines, then he gets to build TC. But if we're at, you know, Hulk Hogan Regional Hospital, and they have one of the machines, they don't get to bill for the TC. Or screenshot it. <laughs> It can be confusing. Yeah, if it had been done at the doctor's office, then we would be billing the 77054-TC if they completed it all, if they had to stop after doing the first one because patient tolerance you'd have two of them but they're not going to ask you this kind of stuff on the CPC exam they don't get that technical on it what you would see on the CPC exam would be just a difference of what this is whether you would add the TC or the 26 or not this is an appropriate question here for the CPC exam.
<laughs> I don't know what's making me think about Hulk Hogan right now. Good gracious, I am such a child of the 80s. Okay, so Gupta. Whoops. So if we're doing a venography of the adrenal gland unilaterally at a hospital and the doctor is not going to do the interpretation and supervision what are we going to bill Fifty two will always be the answer if another MD will do the interpretation. So you can write somewhere here if interp another MD equals fifty two mod. If we do a venogram renally, bilaterally, and the physician is billing for interpretation only, we're going to use our 26 modifier. If our venogram renal is unilaterally done outside hospital, use TC modifier. And then, what was our other one over here? The 770054, because I know that's the only one that I know of that's got multiple or single 77054. Yeah. So under this 54, because we're supposed to be doing multiple, If patient unable to tolerate study and stops after one duct. Use mod fifty three. So now you got examples of all four. It just takes practice. Keep looking, keep trying, find all the practice questions that you can with TC in them with 26 in them, with 52 in them. Move those examples to the code books, just like this, next to the codes. The more practice, the more times you'll see it, the more times you'll remember which scenario goes with which.
and it will eventually click in. It's not going to happen the first time you hear this. It's all going to sound like a foreign language to you, but it will kick in one of these days. Let me check chat real quick. V, it's it's a good way to answer your question. I'm probably overthinking this, but why wouldn't we use 26 for another MD that interprets it? And 52 for the supervising MD, because that's not the way that the Medicare wants those edits to be. They have advised us to do it this way, and that's the way it's written out according to Medicare, the way they want it, you know or our CMS guidelines, whatever. That's what our encoder says to do. Twenty six. If the provider is billing for their interpretation only of a procedure, that's when we use the twenty six modifier. Fifty-two is our reduced services, so we're not going to bill for the MD to supervise and interpret and do the test. We're only going to bill for part of it, so that's why the reduced services goes on if another physician is going to interpret but we need to bill for our facility for doing the test. We're going to bill for reduced services. You're welcome. All right. The rest of the questions I did not write. <laughs> so they won't be as difficult or as controversy. But if you can do these questions that I write for you guys then the CPC exam is going to be a breeze. Breeze, so easy for you guys. So good job of getting through that. <laughs> Let me move this down. And I have not put in the little blockage things. I saw this question today and I'm like, I don't remember this one. I'm sure I've seen it, but holy heck, they got a lot of uh, CPT codes here. So that's why I brought this one out. I'm sure I've done this one, but I don't remember ever teaching this one. So let's look. The first thing you're going to do, of course, when you see this exam question is you're going to put blinders on. That's why it's nice to bring blank index cards. If you're taking the exam in person, you can cover up part of the answer sheet like this with a little index card and that way you can put on blinders like you need to do for horses. If there's fire on either side of the street and you still need them to go through that street, you put blinders on them so they can't see it. And that way they can keep moving forward and get where they need to go. Same concept here. Cover up part of the answer when it looks scary like that with a ton of answers and a ton of codes. And just concentrate on the first codes. Every single code is different, which is super helpful. If we just get this answer correct, we don't have to worry about the scariness that is back here. Because no matter what, we'll have the answer right. We have two answers with the sixes, the 612 and the 630. Then we have two answers with 530 and 554. No idea, but we're probably going to have to look up both sets 
So I would just start with the first one in numerical order, meaning the smallest numbers, and I would start with these two. See what the differences are on these two, what's going on, see if there's a header change between that and the 26s. If there is, it's easier. So let's go look up those codes real quick. Y'all ever seen um, Gone with the Wind and they trying to get those horses through when they're burning the King Kong set down? I mean, that's actually what they did in the movie set is they burned down the old set of the King Kong movie during Gone with the Wind to make it look like the city was on fire. But they really did have to get those horses through there. All right. Two, two, five, three, three. Three, three is under a lateral extra approach technique header. Our five, five, four is under anterior and anterior lateral approach. Goodness. What's going on in our two, two, six, twelve? Two, two, six, twelve. Are we in a different header? What header are we under on this one? That's posterior. Posterior, posterior, lateral, two lateral, transverse technique. Lord. All right, and then our two, two, six, three. Oh, we're still under the same header for that one, right? They're both under the same thing. So since they're both under this, I bet it's going to be a difference between A and C because they're both under the same approach. And more often than not, they try to pick two codes that are super similar and then the other two are giveaways. So I bet it's going to be a difference between A and C because those are both the same approach. Let's check out our approach. This one's going to be two pages long. We are doing a kneeling position on a spinal table. What does that tell us about our patient? If our patient is kneeling, when you're at church, right, and you're kneeling down there's your feet and your hands right and if we're doing surgery we're going through the back right that's posterior right posterior so these other ones lateral and the lateral ex whatever approach and the anterior approach those aren't going to be through the posterior end if that makes any sense we also have this way too but posterior So I still think that we would get rid of D and A. 
No, no, not A. Sorry. D and B, right? Then you just have to figure out, are you a 12 or are you a 30? Twelve, you can't do much with it because it's we gotta go look at mama. Mama is cervical. But we're doing Arthro Posterior Technique Single Interspace and our difference between it and our thirty is that we're also doing a lenectomy and a disectomy to prepare an interspace. So did we do a lenectomy and disectomy? If we did, we're doing 30. If we didn't do those, then we're doing 12. And I see that we've got a disectomy and a lenectomy in here. So that shows me that C is going to be my answer. And I don't have to look up anything else. If you want to look up everything else and see that we ended up with a huge amount of codes you can have at it, but there's not going to be enough time during the exam to match up the times two, to match up the 42, to match up the 938 and the 930, all in this question, just to verify you have the right answer. Um, a wholehearted suggestion is to just put on the blinders when it's Every answer is different like this. Just hyper focus on those first codes, pick your answer and move on. What do you guys think about this question? You got any? You've been binge watching on the videos. That's awesome. I hope it's helpful. I hope you're not drowning in my voice all the time, Shelly. And I hope it's helpful. I know there's a lot of people taking their exam this month. It's awesome. I hope you do very well. Let's see. Oh, okay, let me show you. I don't have the section done in my books yet, my notes, but so if we go back to the first answers, which were two, two, five, two, two, five, five, four. So instead of looking here at this code descriptor, I went to my first header. My header was anterior and anterior approach. So I put an A beside this answer. Then my next answer was 52233. Where am I at? Um, that's a 54, 5. Three, three. That's right up here. But you see its approach was lateral extra approach. So I have these two approaches for two different answers. This is um, this one's B's answer. This one is D's answer. Okay. I just put that down beside those two. Then I came over here and looked up B, A, and C. A and C 
are both under this header, which is posterior, posterior. I went back to my question, realized that my patient was kneeling in that position, like on a church pew, then that means I know that I'm going, we're doing a spinal surgery, right? Because we're doing L4, L5, S1 right there. You know you're doing the spine. So common sense tells you that you're going to be doing a posterior approach because you're going through the back side of the patient, not the front side. It also says in the second part about posterior blah, blah, blah. So I know now that any approach that is not posterior can be gotten rid of. So these two answers, B and D, you can get rid of. So with A and, let me show you the question again, A and C left over, now we get to look at what the differences are in those CPT code descriptors. So A is 12, which is down here at the very bottom, and all it says is lumbar. That's so unhelpful, that don't tell you nothing. So you gotta go look at mama. What did mama do? It did posterior approach, which is great, but it is doing a single interspace. Where the semicolon is, is right after that interspace. That's where mama is different from all of her children. Mama is only cervical, below C2. Her child here is thoracic. This child is lumbar. But still, this child is everything before that semicolon. So we did a single interspace surgery on the lumbar is what this code says, single interspace. On the other end, the other answer, the 30, the 30 code, they did a lenectomy and a disectomy to prepare an interspace. So we have not a single interspace worked on, but we have a preparation of an interspace with a lenectomy, with a disectomy. So quite a difference in these two procedures. So when we go back to our question, we see that this procedure had a lenectomy and a disectomy in them. And there's only one answer that has those procedures in it, which was the last code we looked at, which was the 30. It has a prep. It also has the lenectomy and the disectomy in it. Is that helpful? Yes, Gupta, please don't ever read these questions. You never want to go to the questions. You want to definitely go to the CPT codes, look at their headers first, see what you can eliminate answer-wise based off the headers. This header said this was an anterior approach surgery and this one said it was a lateral approach surgery. We saw that our kneeling position 
was going to be a posterior approach, that helps you eliminate two answers right away without reading a question and just looking for your approaches. Absolutely, you don't want to read these lengthy ones. You don't want to read any questions at all. You want to go straight to the answers no matter what you're doing. Because both of these are posterior, AAPC wants to know, do you know that the 30 is doing three different types of procedures in one code and that the 12 is only doing one procedure? That's all they're wanting to know. Did you know that? If you do know that, then you can pick out the correct answer by just looking for the disectomy and the lenectomy out of the question. I only, only looked at my route. We went into the body, and then I only looked for disectomy and lenectomy. I didn't read none of this other mess. There was no reason to read anything else here. The fastest, most efficient way, and the and um, a way to verify that you're getting the answers correct is to absolutely use the book's headers to eliminate answers before you do the descriptors. Absolutely. All right, let me put something in here. I got some. Some more mazes. We had fun doing them the other night where I was just making them up off the top of my head. So I went and found their own proper questions and put them here so you guys could work on these again. So the first thing you're going to have to do with a Mo surgery, step one, always is your locale. Where are you located? Are we in 11 or are we in a 13? Ooh, my kids are playing some really loud music in case y'all can hear it. So the first thing we're gonna look through this question is see if we are 11 or 13. The easiest thing to look for is just the 13 because it's got smaller body parts in it. My children. We've got the neck. Where would we be if we were in the neck? Are we 11 or 13? You need to know your differences in your anatomies for those interspaces. These are vertebral bodies. An interspace is different This is a segment. This is an interspace.
Poor guy. Twinkle's son. Just looking at her messages. So the definition of an interspace is the, the components between two adjacent vertebral bodies that contain invertebrate disc. So it's two adjacent vertebral bodies is what an interspace is. That's why on this picture of the lumbar vertebral, they've got all those lines going to show you that an interspace is bigger than just one little segment. A segment is a single complete vertebral bone. Um, and a single level is two vertebral bones within an interspace together. So a level means two of your segments. It gets crazy, but you need to make sure when you do your Google anatomy searches and you're doing your anatomy prep over here on page uh, 116, to add as much information telling you about your differences between your segments and your interspaces so that you can keep it straight in your head about how many components equal up to be an interspace versus a segment, for sure. Yes, we are going to be an 11 for this one because it's in the neck. So we can get rid of that one. And we can get rid of that one. They both have 12 in it. So we don't have to look up and see if they did something to the body twice. We know they did. We just need to know if we need to add 15 or not. So all we're going to do is go look to see how many slides they made out of whatever they cut off the body. We know they cut off two things. So that, who's gifting? Who's gifting? Twinkle's gifting. Aw, go cart. Congratulations. So that we can see if either, if we need to add our 15 or not. So our first stage had how many microscope slides made? It had four. And our second stage had two additional microscope slides made. So with that information, do we need to use our 15 or not? Would our answer be A or D? Yes, we add the 15 code if we have more than five tissue blocks per stage. We do not add in MO surgeries. So remember every time you see these, no add. These are independent. So as long as this number's under the number five and this number's under the number five, then we're good to go. We do not add 15. So perfect.
Ooh, here's another one. Let me put in our blinders here. Now, does anyone remember what I told you recently? If we're going to use category two or three code, whatever this is, in the back of the book, what has to be going on in the procedure? Just knowing that little bit of info will help us out. This 64 code is in our nervous section. This 0216T code is after the medicine section. It's in that other red section back there. It's a category two code. If we're going to use category two codes, what has to be going on in the question for that to be a possible answer. Anybody remember? 15 more minutes already. I haven't even barely hit the questions I had prepped for tonight. Where did the time go? No, Rosh, we do not add for Moz. Yes, you can rewatch these lives. Absolutely, as soon as I end them, you can rewind them now while you're watching them. Absolutely. It will always be here for you. Oh! Don't forget about the little hearts or thumbs ups here too, guys, on the um, YouTube. I forget about that being available. The thumbs up helps push the material out there for other people too. Um, that's so weird. I don't know why you can't access them. V, she got it, ultrasound, that's right. Patrice too, who won? Jody, she won a membership too. Congratulations, Jody, I hope that helps you. I helped somebody that got their CPC and a CPMA that is a Jody too already, I think. So we're gonna look through this question to see what kind of radiology was done. If it was ultrasound, ultrasounds are always category two codes. If they used fluoroscope, we're always gonna be in the nervous section. That is super helpful to know. So let's go check out our ra radiology. What did we use? My kids are making all kinds of noise. They got the bass cranking in there. Here we go. We got ultrasound. So we know r right away. Twinkles on a... Oh, congratulations, Eva. We are going to be using the category two codes. That means we can get rid of B and C on this one. That little bit of knowledge is super helpful. Be sure and write it above these codes on 64493, whatever page number that happens to be on. At the very top of the page, write if ultrasound, go to category two. That way you'll remember for the exam, because you might see something like this on the exam. Now all we need to know is, would we add a T18 and a radiology code from the radiology section with this particular section or not? What was done? was ultrasound.
Yes, my love. Where, did you get your tampons? Did yeah. you find them? Okay. So, well, I can, okay, so I tested it out. John told me to test it out because he was like, hey, Travis, let me see a tampon. He did this in the water bottle. And I was like, that looks like a pair of lungs. That goes in Slater Girls. <laughs> yes, it does look like a pair of lungs. It expands really, really big. Yes. The heck? Yep. You guys don't get enough credit. No, we got to walk around with that big wad or whatever. Yep, it's <laughs> not fun. Here, let me see your wrist. Okay. What is that? What? What's that? Are you out there dancing away? No, that's James. Uh, where did that box chain come from? This one's mine. Mama bought it for me at Target. You can tell it's fake because it's already coming off. Yeah, but... Uh-uh. Look at this. Uh-uh. That's it moves. Uh -uh. No, it does not. No. -uh. Fine, I'll take it off. No. Don't you I'm, get it off. I'll yeah. take it off. I can take it off. All right, it off. and so. I want this off too. It's actually a necklace. Your nose sounds so congested. Did you take? No, I don't know. Yeah, it does. And this one's gotta come off too. That yeah, it's too tight. I sound fine. No, you sound congested. Put away all the stuff. Don't leave it out. I put your ice pack back in the freezer and stuff like that. Thank you. Can I have my phone? No, you cannot have your phone. Can I have a root beer? No, you cannot have a root beer. But James gets one. Exactly. I stole them all the way from James, by the way. He managed to get one. Oh, gosh. All right. Sorry, guys. Y'all know that if ultrasound is being taken care of by the Category 2 codes, there's no way in Hades you're going to bill anything from radiology to go along with this. I mean, all you did was ultrasound guidance. There isn't anything fancy. You didn't go back in and do something else radiological that is super extraordinary. It's all just ultrasound guidance. None of this would happen. You would never code a 7,000 with this one either because its fluoroscope is already included. You're not going to add any more radiology from the radiology section to these because these codes already include radiology. So does your category too. So real helpful to know that you wouldn't add anything from radiology to this section at all. I hope that's helpful. Y'all are so sweet to each other. <laughs> I know, my children are just crazy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Eva, oh, her test got pushed back again. Oh, my goodness. All right. So this answer would definitely be B. You don't want to add any 7,000s to these nor would you even add them to the 6,000 codes. Another Moss surgery. They're all in the 13s, so you don't have to look up your location. Not every answer has a 14 in it, which is a second time you go back to the body and cut something else off. So you need to see if there's multiple stages. So I would check the question first to see if there's multiple stages. So I'm just looking for the word stage. Here's the first stage. They had three tissue blocks. If they're going to say something is a first stage, then they must have a second stage. Oh, there it is right there. Second stage. And it had six blocks. So you know you're going to have a 14 because you did have two stages. So you can get rid of any answer that doesn't have the 14 with it. 
So this is one stage. This is the second stage. One stage. Second stage. Now you just need to know, would I add another 14 or would I add a 15 to this? If we look at our stages, this set, this item that was cut off the body was cut into three microscope slides. That does not qualify for a 15. The second stage was cut up into six tissue blocks or slides, microscope slides, which does qualify for the 15 because it's over the number 5, which means we would add our 15, so we know that D is our answer for that one, for sure. And I didn't even look at the second page of the question, but there's our answer for that one. We have this lovely E1. I would look at my modifiers and I would notice we have two with the E2 modifier. What is our E2 modifier? I'd run up to the front cover real quick and check that out. E2 means lower eyelid. Is that the only thing we worked on was the lower eyelid? So I would look, we've got left lower eyelid from the lower eyelid. I don't see anything that moves to the upper or a different. So I would get rid of D and A based off just noticing that these two were the same and checking my question to verify that really quick. Now all I know or need to look for is the difference between the 21 and the 24. So what's the difference between those two codes? That's 679. Two one and two four. Did we do a suture repair or did we do an extensive repair? Do we see anything in this question that means that we did anything that was extensive? What do you guys think is the answer for this one? Correct, Rosh. Yep, we did extensive because we did the stripping. You're right. Yep. It's not just a suture. We did do the stripping, which means we get to code for the B. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope this has been helpful tonight. Um, I got to go finish figuring out what's wrong with the coupon on the website and um, finish this radiology section I'm almost done with. It's a really cool section and going to finish up the respiratory one for some reason. I only have five pages left of it that I need to finish. And goodness, did I make the notes in that section. It's a really cool section. I made a lot of anatomy stuff on this. Um, so I want to get those two posted before I go on vacation next week. I'll be back for sure on Monday for our live, probably be on 
uh, TikTok some for some book prep videos. I can get some more um, respiratory done. I don't even know. Did I do some? I'm sure I did for the respiratory this year, but I'll make sure. Um, I got to go out and do some little bit of shopping. Uncle David sent us a dress code for his country club little thingy. They got a little in their neighborhood. They got this little restaurant that they can eat in, but they have a dress code. No rips, tears, no T-shirts with um, writing on it or anything. Polos or button downs. No open toed shoes. So my my poor boys need need a little upgrade in their attire to be able to eat there twice. So we'll, we'll go we'll go to Coles and pay them some some attention and get that done before we go out of town. Other than that, I don't have a lot to do this weekend. So I should be able to come on and do some more book prep videos. I'll be sure and be on Monday and Wednesday for regular lives next week. I just have Friday. I won't be here unless I'm live with Patrice and Rosh and we're having tea somewhere. We might go live. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Time does go fast, doesn't it? Aw, oh, Amy and Eva. Y'all are becoming great study buddies, huh? Matt Madison, I just caught up with the live going through it quick. I hope you have a great vacation. Oh, and wish you luck. Your exam is tomorrow. I wish you the very best of luck. You want to do an E&M question real quick before you go? I didn't do any E&M. Let me move. Here we go. I have two E&M questions that are pertinent to you having an exam tomorrow. So if I have an ICU patient who goes into critical care, Would I be able to bill for 31500 or not? That's the whole gist of this question. ICU equals adult. If they are an adult and they are getting critical care, then that means you can bill for this if they're already admitted in ICU. If they come into the ER and you do critical care services down there, you do not bill for this. But since this patient was already admitted, this is probably too confusing being rushed through, but... If they're an adult and they're already admitted, they crash on the floor while they're admitted, you do get to bill for extra services. Something's probably important for you to know during the exam. If, let me find that other question. If they are a child and they are admitted into NICU, they crash there and have some critical care services or whatever, you don't get to bill for any extra services. With babies, if they're already admitted, you don't bill for anything. You just bill for their code, and that's it. If they're a baby born in the birthing center downstairs, and they crash and you need one of these codes, then you get to bill for that. 
But if the baby is already admitted into NICU, NICU is global. It takes care of everything for the babies. But if they're born in the birthing center, that is not global and you can add stuff to it. Adults is the opposite. Adults are opposite. If adults are in ICU, it is not global and you get to bill for stuff. Anyway. I know that information is super helpful for the exam, and it could help you make a decision on the exam tomorrow. So just wanted to get that out there. I hope that wasn't too confusing. You can pause the screens and catch this rationale and answers and maybe make heads or tails of it before you go to bed. But super helpful to know that at least for E&M tomorrow on those two things. I'll go over it more for you guys on Monday's live, okay? Again, I hope this is helpful. I love you guys so much. Best wishes for everybody who's taking an exam tomorrow, and I will see you guys.